Hi, and welcome to question nine of the 2022 Junior Cert Higher Level Maths. If you want a copy of the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. So let's get stuck in. And we have, it looks like a standard algebra question. To my mind, these are always the bread and butter, the things that we can practice that are fairly consistent. So it tells us here um, that k is equal to seven, and then m minus k is equal to four. Okay, I just really had left the answer there, I'm sorry. m minus k is equal to four. Work out the value of nine k take away six m. So there's not an equation here, this is just an algebraic expression, but we're told information about it. So I'm told, I'm just, re even though I have it here, let me rewrite it, so k is equal to seven, and then it says m minus k is equal to four. Now if you cop it, I know this. So m minus k is seven, so I can substitute seven instead of k. So then I go, well look, this is, this is an equation, I can solve this. To solve this, I'm gonna add seven here to get rid of the, set, the negative seven. If I do it one side, I have to do it to both. So they cancel, that's why I did that. So m is equal to four plus seven is 11. Okay, that's cool. So look, I'm definitely up here on the low partial for sure. Now on the 9k take away 6m, well, look, I know what k is, I was told, so that's seven, okay? And the six, I just worked out that the six was 11. Now nine sevens is 63, take away six elevens is 66. 63, take away 66 is negative three. And that's it, I think. And the answer, yeah, it's the answer, okay? So that's part A, now part B, um, and I, I probably should have said this, support pause in the video and see, give, give it a go. This is pretty standard um, uh, factorization. So it says factorize fully this statement here. Now let's rewrite it. Sometimes with junior cert, yeah, before you can work with this, you have to kind of rearrange things in the order they are. Um, but I don't think that's the case here. So if I look, is there commonality between these two things here? I see, well, I see an X and an X. I also see that these are even numbers. So um, I could take out two. Yeah, okay. So if I pull out two X out of the first thing, like I should say this, usually I just say split it down the middle for this methodology. So if I'm pulling two X out of this, it's as if I have eight A times X um over 2x so the x's would cancel the 8 divided by 2 would be 4a so i'm left from the first term there i'm left with 4a now if i do the same thing here okay so 14 times b times x divided by 2x well again the x's would cancel and 14 divided by 2 is 7. so my last term there is 7b now if i get that on this side i have to get the same thing over here so I kind of look at these two terms and go, what would I need to pull out to leave 4a behind? If I think about it, like 4ay divided by what gives me 4a? Well, if you see it, it's just the y, okay? So I'm pulling y out here, you know, plus y. Uh, would that work here for the second one? Minus seven times b times y divided by y would give me um, seven b. It looks like there's a mistake there. I realized my mistake was actually back um, here. So I should have not, that shouldn't be minus. Let me just change those things there. I was using blue. Um, so pen. Now, if I was taking the, min I should have said minus 14 over here, divided by 2x is minus 7b. Now, if I get minus 7b here, I should get minus 7b here. So minus 7by divided by y would leave you with minus 7b. So my two factors are 2x plus y by um, 4a minus 7b. Now, if I multiply those all these things together, so the 2x by both of these terms and then the y by both of these terms, I should end up with my original statement again if I wanted to double check. Now, we'll move on here now to question, and that's just the answer there for part B. Now, part C here is, again, bug standard algebra um, there's not an equation here, this is just an expression, but it's, a, it's an algebraic fraction, and you're subtracting one algebraic fraction from another. So if I was doing this with like even something simple, 
like um, a half take away a quarter. Now, I might want to find the common denominator. And one way to find a common denominator is to multiply the two denominators by each other. And then the method I would use, okay, is I kind of divide the, the denominator here into the common denominator. So you're left with the four. So it's four times the top number. Take away, divide the denominator here into my common denominator. I'm left with two times the, the numerator. And I'd end up with, what's that, four times one is four. Take away two times one is two over eight. And that's the same thing as two over eight. Now an equivalent fraction there, divide on top by two and bottom by two, I get a quarter. And a half take away a quarter is a quarter. So I'm going to do the exact same method here. I'm going to find my common denominator by multiplying the two denominators in the question by each other. Okay. And then I divide the first denominator in, and that will leave me with this 3x plus 5. And I'm going to multiply that by the numerator of 2. Then take away, do the same thing here with the second denominator. That leaves the 2x plus 1 times the numerator here, which is 3. We're basically done now. We just have to go left to right, top then bottom. Actually, just top, really. 3x times 2 is 6x. Then the, three, the 5 times 2 is 10. Now I'm taking away from that. Now I should do the multiplication here. I'm taking away 2x times 3 is 6x. And 1 times 3 is 3. Now my numerator is the same. Okay. Um, so let me just quickly chat that down. Now I have to make sure that this, I'm subtracting 6x and I'm subtracting 3. So 6x take away 6x is going to be gone. Okay. 10 take away 3 is going to be 7. Okay, and it's going to go straight to the answer, because it's the same as I've written all that. Um, it's 7 over my my common denominator. Now, sometimes we say we, we're looking for the lowest common denominator. Okay, but you don't, it doesn't have to be the lowest. Um, and you can always find the denominator by multiplying these two denominators here together to find the common denominator. And then you're using a way of turning them, in essence, turning these into the same fraction and then taking it away. That's ultimately what you're doing. We saw there with the example of a half take away a quarter, that it's the same method. It's just, this looks much more challenging. Okay, and it is something you can practice. Once you get the hang of them, they're good questions for picking up chunks of marks. Okay, uh, and these are the kind of things we can practice to become very proficient at. I always kind of make the analogy with maths that it's, it's got thousands of skills. As you master each skill and can apply them to more complex problems, you improve and improve and improve. If you don't have the basic skills, the, the problem solving that comes in maths as you advance becomes impossible. Okay, So we have to make sure that these skills of algebra are second nature um, to be proficient, especially at a higher level. Now, um, the last thing here, question 9, part D. I can see this here. Um, let me just rewrite it. So 2x squared minus 7x minus 3 is equal to 0. Now, I instantly see that this has biggest power is 2, and it's all the one variable. So this is quadratic. Now, we could factorize this, but they tell me that there's going to be two decimal places in the answer. So factorization won't work. I have to use the quadratic formula. Now, the quadratic formula, I'm going to write it down here x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And it's in the maths tables. Okay. Now, to use this formula, I have to, I have to use the general form of a quadratic in order to identify what the a, b, and c values are. And if you see it here, the a value is 2. The b value is the number, the entire number, in front of the x, so it's minus 7. And the c value is the number at the end, so it's negative 3. Now, at this stage, I just want to substitute in the different numbers. So instead of b, I'm going to put in negative 7. And then plus or minus the b squared is negative 7 squared. Now, I must make sure to put that in brackets if I'm using the calculator. Um, negative 7 squared will give you an answer of negative 49. Whereas ne negative 7 all to be squared Okay, gives you plus 49. So without the bracket there, you, you could go wrong. 
That's minus 4 times a is 2, and c is negative 3. And that's all divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. And we're good to go. Now, I'm going to go to the answer because it's just it's tidier. At this stage, I could simplify this down step by step, but there's going to be two answers here. So I'm going to split this at this point for the plus and then split it for the minus. Now, I can throw this into the calculator as one big calculation. Okay, I'm not going to bother wasting your time because it's just a matter of doing it in the calculator. And when I've done, found the plus answer and recorded it, okay, then I can just backspace and change that plus to a negative and then put it through the calculator and I end up with these two values. Now they do say they want the answers correct at two decimal places. Um, so I'm going to turn to decimal and then to get two decimal places, the third decimal place is what matters. That's greater than five, so the number before it goes up by one. And I got 3.89. On the far side, when I turn this to a decimal, I got negative 0 0.386. Again, it's the third decimal place that matters. It's bigger than five, the number before it rounds up by one, and I got my two values of x for when the equation equals zero. And ultimately, with a quadratic, that's the two points where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, where all along that line, y is zero, and that's what that zero represents. Okay. Um, the other things I just put, I have, I have the graph here put in myself. Um, that minus three is the y-intercept. That's that number there. And later on, I suppose, in leave search, you'll start working on finding the max and min, which is the lowest point down here in the bottom, which has value um, as, you, as you explore quadratics more often. It is something I've been like struggling as a math teacher to kind of explain why are quadratics important. And to a certain extent, there's lots and lots of different reasons, but one is gravity. Being able to describe how things are affected by gravity often is done using quadratic equations which you think about life on Earth, that's everything. Okay, everything is affected by gravity on the Earth. So being able to describe that in mathematical models is super important. Being able to use the quadratic formula, okay, is very important. And we should be proficient at that skill, like the other skills we've seen in parts A, B, and C. Um, so I think that's the end of question nine. So as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working on, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. See you in question 10.